Hi guys. <laughs> I'm getting around. Kind of late. This is Monday, September the 9th. Already. Man, it's getting... Uh, September's starting to scooch already. <clears throat> I've got... <laughs> just got a phone call from uh, some brothers and you know, these, these, we have so much going in this world that uh, getting in touch with brothers and sisters, having phone calls and emails and texts, it's exciting. <laughs> Uplift each other. You know, the, to be able to talk to somebody, uh, it's just amazing. It just, it's just fun. Uh, and... <laughs> Because we're all looking for the same thing, right? We're all looking for our snatching away. Uh, <clears throat> for our realm is inherent out of the heavens, it says right here on, on uh, page 465 of the concordant literal, the right hand side. Our realm is inherent in the heavens, out of which we are awaiting a Savior also, the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're looking, we all, that's our expectation, you know, we're all of us in the body so <laughs> that's what we're looking for yeah <laughs> ah. anyway love one another that's what it all boils down to love each other uh, <laughs> what else is there uh, here in Galatians it says that we're <clears throat> I mean let's get over where it's at uh, Galatians uh, Five, six. It's on the right hand side. Six. That we're working, especially for the good, <clears throat> especially for the family of faith. Uh, consequently, then, as we have occasion, we're working for the good of all, especially for the family of faith. God gives us insight into things. It's not of none of it. It's of ourselves. <clears throat> we have a. The study that uh, Alicia and Judy and Sterling helped me and Marsha put together. And this one is... By the way, hi! <laughs> She's over here with me. <clears throat> I woke up this morning, wasn't sure if I was going to be able to talk. My voice was all cackly and down deep, like a talking in the bottom of a barrel. <laughs> I thought, man, I'm getting the crud. <clears throat> Still got a scratchy throat, but... Ah... Uh, it's summertime colds come through, I guess. An unsearchable riches. A. E. Knox shares this uh, section, Suffering and the Last Days. The scriptures declare that in these days, men will be selfish, fond of money, ostentatious. That's a big word. I don't know what that means. I did at one time. I looked it up a time or two. Proud culminators, stubborn to parents, ungrateful and malign without natural affection implacable adversaries and uncontrollable fierce averse to good traitors rash conceited fond of their own gratifications rather than fond of god having a form of devoutness yet denying his power such are the ones to be shunned second timothy 3 1 to 5 now, we're looking at verses 1 and 2. Uh, so that's what these articles, this section here is, is about. Is it possible to live among such saints and not suffer? Thank God the scriptures do not say that all are to be like this, nor does each one have all these traits. Yet it behooves each one of us to be aware of this word and to watch that we are not even tinged with such sins but we cannot help suffering from their very presence until we become acquainted with them we may not even know that they are included in this list some sins such as such as selfishness are so prevalent that they do not impress us at first a knock shares in his commentary the concordant new testament commentary <clears throat> We who are living in these last days will bear witness to the truth of the scriptures. For no one today could give a more accurate indictment 
of the times than is given in this passage. The whole list from selfishness to self-gratification is characteristic, yet nothing more so than the form of devoutness, which is devoid of its vital power. I looked that word up uh, a while ago or this morning. It was, when I was doing a study this morning, I looked that word up. and Because we touched on that again. Do I still have that open? I guess I don't. Uh, that word... Uh, I just said read it. <laughs> Marcia? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I just looked it up and it was in our study today that we was doing. And I was I didn't know what it meant. Which one was I looking at? Let's see. <laughs> devoutness. Alright. Devout because I this is a word I mean I looked it up and I thought, what do you mean devoutness? I'm thinking devoutness is one way, but when I seen it over here, let me type the meaning of devoutness. <clears throat> e V O U T S S devoutness. Let's see if I can find it. If that's what it's. It was talking about religion. Right here. It says the quality of believing strongly in a religion and obeying all its rules or principles some reason I, that wasn't what I was thinking devoutness was so devoutness <clears throat> that means the whole list from selfishness to self gratification is characteristic yet nothing more so than the form of devoutness which is devoid of its vital power the quality of believing strongly in a religion or obeying all its rules or principles we are not asked to correct this condition, but to shun those who are involved in it. A. E. Knox commentary. So the Debar has this for 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 and 2. But know this, that in the last days, wild terms will take stand. For men will be selfish, silver befended, haughty, over appearing ones, blasphemers, incompetent, in Complaint to parents. Compliant. In compliant to parents. Graceless, favorless. <laughs> but anyway, we use a. <clears throat> I like the way that the bar reads. It, it's more of a poetic, but it's this has a lot of the Greek element in it. So let's look at these references for that verse, <clears throat> and these are out of the concordant literal, in the order that we read them. I'll leave it down below in the video. Without natural affection, implacable adversaries, uncontrollable fears, averse to good, traitors, rash, conceited, fond of their own gratifications rather than fond of God. For the era will be when they will not tolerate sound teaching, but their hearing being tickled, they will heap up for themselves teachers in accord with their own desires. And indeed, they will be turning their hearing away from the truth yet will be turned aside to myths. Now the Spirit is saying explicitly that in subsequent eras, some will be withdrawing from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and the teachings of demons and the hypocrisy of false expression, their own conscience having been catarized. Wherefore, God gives them over in the lust of their hearts to the uncleanness of dishonoring their bodies among themselves those who alter the truth of God into the lie and are venerated and offer divine service to the creature rather than the creator who is blessed for the eons. Amen. Therefore, God gives them over to dishonorable passions for their females besides alter the natural use into that which is beside nature. Likewise, also the males besides leaving the natural use of the female were inflamed in their craving for one another, males with males, affecting again the indecency, again they back in themselves the retribution of their deception, which must be. And according as they do not test God to have him in recognition, God gives them over to a disqualified mind to do that which is not befitting. Filled with all injustice, wickedness, evil, greed, distended with envy, murder, and strife, guile, 
depravity, whispers, vilifiers, detesters of God, outragers and proud, ostentatious, inventors of evil things, and stubborn to parents, unintelligent, perfidious, and without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Wow, that's quite a list. Those who, recognizing the just statue of God, that those committing such things are deserving of death, not only are doing them, but are endorsing them also, those who are committing them. <clears throat> then, then, your members that are on the earth, prostitution and uncleanliness, passion, evil desire and greed, which is idolatry, because of which the indignation of God is coming on the sons of stubbornness, among whom you also once walked when you lived in these things. Yet now you also be putting away all of these. Another list. Anger, fury, malice, calumny, obscenity out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, stripping off the old humanity together with his practices, and putting on the young, which is being renewed into recognition to accord with the image of the one who creates it. That word obscenity uh, in the, the bar was blasphemy. If anyone is teaching differently and is not approaching with sound words, even those of our Lord Jesus Christ and the teaching in accord with devoutness, he is conceited, versed in nothing but morbid about questionings and controversies, out of which is coming envy and strife and calumnies, wicked suspicions, altercations of men of a decanted mind and deprived of the truth and fearing that devoutness is capital. No one should be deluding himself. <laughs> No one should be deluding you in any, by many, any method. For should not the apostasy be coming first and the man of lawlessness be unveiled, the son of destruction? Or who is opposing, who is opposing himself, lifting himself up over everyone termed to God or an object of veneration, so that he is seated in the temple of God, demonstrating that he himself is God? Do you not remember that still being with you? I told you these things. And now you are aware of what is detaining for him to be unveiled in his own era. For the secret of lawlessness is already operating. It was operating in Paul's time. <clears throat> Only when the present detainer may be coming out of the mist, <laughs> that's us, then will be unveiled the lawless one when the Lord Jesus will dispatch with the spirit of his mouth and will discard by the advent of his presence whose presence is in accord with the operation of Satan. Satan's the ruler of this world now. With all power and signs and false miracles and with every seduction of injustice among those who are perishing because they do not receive the love of the truth for their salvation. And therefore, God will be sending them an operation of deception for them to believe the falsehood that all may be judged who do not believe the truth but delight in injustice. Uh, now we, the able, ought to be bearing the infirmities of the impotent and not to be pleasing ourselves. Let each of us please his associate for his good toward his edification. For Christ also pleases not himself, but according as it is written, the reproaches of those reproaching thee fall on me. For whatever was written before was written for this teaching of ours that through the endurance and consolation of the scriptures, we may have expectation. For the love of Christ is constraining us, judging this, that if one died for the sake of all, consequently all died. And he died for the sake of all those that are living, who should by no means still be living to themselves, but to the one dying, and be roused for their sakes. So that we from now on are acquainted with no one according to flesh, Yet even if we have known Christ according to, to flesh, nevertheless we know him no longer. So that if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. The primitive passed by, lo, there has come new. Wow. <clears throat> Those references was for uh, 2 Timothy 3, 1 and 2. And these come to mind as we went through them. We are thanking the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ always praying concerning you on hearing of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have for all the saints. Our love is the love we have for each other. Is, uh, maturity comes through that. Because of the expectation reserved for you in the heavens, which you hear before 
in the word of truth of the evangel. For our realm is inherent in the heavens, out of which we are awaiting a Savior also, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transfigure the body of our humiliation to conform it to the body of his glory and accord the operation which enables him even to subject all to himself. If then you are roused together with Christ, be seeking that which is above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Be disposed to that which is above, not to that on the earth. For you died, and your life is hid together with Christ in God. And whenever Christ, our life, should be manifested, then you also should be manifested together with him in glory. <laughs> we love you all. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> our lives are hid with Christ in God. Whenever he's manifest, and we'll be with him. <laughs> Well, that's exciting. We're all looking forward to that. Let it happen any moment. We Who knows? We don't know. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, right? Sooner the better. Yep. Nobody knows. We don't know. No, we live our life like we're here. You know, you can't put your life on hold while we're waiting on our Lord and Savior to return for his body. We've got to live our life. I have to live it <clears throat> and enjoy what God gives us. You know, uh, <laughs> He gives us life, breath, and all. So it's all His, Him. It's all Him. We're His achievements. Ephesians tells us we're His achievements. Right, Marcia? Right. <laughs> Made ready for good works, which God makes ready beforehand that we can walk in. So, anyway. <clears throat> <laughs> love you guys uh, if you haven't seen Dean and Chris's video the DC time they're just going through this study on the uh, the uh, two natures. expose of two natures I got that little book I, uh, when they was going through it last week uh, I ordered that thing and it's really neat it's a little bit thin real thin book and uh, there's a lot in it and I thought, man, this would be a neat one just to read it. Do a video just reading the book. I'm, I might do that. I don't know. We'll see. But <laughs> it's like a really short page. It's about that tall book. It's small. <clears throat> like a pamphlet, I guess. But anyway, I'm rambling. Anything you want to say, Marcia? I love you guys. Yep. Yep. We do love you guys. Appreciate your input, your text, your emails, and the phone calls. Uh, it's exciting getting a phone call from people just to say hi and encourage each other. So, love you guys. We'll talk to you all soon. See you tomorrow. <laughs>